What's up guys, another road bike time trial review video, this time looking at highlights from the uh, the first race back after a bit of a, a break in the National Road Series in Australia, down uh, up on the Sunshine Coast, beautiful place in Australia. Today we're going to be looking at the last stage of this tour, which was a road bike time trial. There is a four minute highlight here, but there was there's no commentary on it, and the footage is also kind of average. So we're going to watch it through. Uh, we've got I've got the winner's ride Brent from Brenton Jones up on Strava. We'll look through some of his power data and just yeah do a bit of a, a bit of a commentary on it. So here we got uh, starting off uh, Jensen Plowright right here um, did some good sprints. I think he got a couple of podiums in some of the stages. He is currently running for Team Bridge Lane. And you can see here he's on the la he's got his Lapierre bike. So this is his bike for next year because he is joining the FDJ uh, development team, the Conti team, so he's already gotten his bike for next year. I love the look of these Lapierre bikes that have the, the interesting sort of seat tube uh, chainstay junction. Um, I just really love the look of these Lapierre, so that's pretty cool seeing him, you know, still racing domestically but with his new kit. You'll see this highlights package is, so that, this is Cam Scott here. He did, I think he got sec, uh, third on the, second or third on the stage. He, I can't find his ride on Strava, so we won't be able to see him. But yeah, so they literally started inside the uni, then headed out, very technical. So Cam Scott there, using the hood's position. Here we got Matt Dinham, quick look, laser bullet, aero lid, uh, aero overshoes, skin suit, pretty standard thing here. So the they're all on road bikes because the time trials in the National Road Series in Australia Usually if they're under 10 kilometers, they have to be on road bikes and most races, even if they have a time trial that happens to be over 10 kilometers, the race just says, no, nah, you've got to use road bikes because you know, it's, it's hard for, <laughs> for domestic teams to get everyone on a time trial bike. So having it on the road bike makes it fairer. I can't see any specific adjustments to the setup here. It looks pretty standard. Uh, no bottles. So Matt Dinham there, I think he got fourth or fifth on the stage. Very impressive for a smaller rider. Matt's got a, um, a mountain bike background, so he's really good with the technical skills, so his cornering would be great. This is Brenton Jones here. This is the, he won the stage. Very impressive time and a heap of power. He averaged like four, <laughs> what was it? 460, 470 watts for the time trial, which we'll have a look at. Um, again, standard setup, normal wheels, not even that deep. Like these are just, it looks like a 60 on the rear, 50 on the front. He's on his SL7 skin suit, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, heading off there, so Cam Scott here did a really fast time. He's going for the hoods position, aero on the hoods, bending the elbows, getting the back down. Works well, very aero. Problem with this, I would say, would be on a technical course like this, is his cornering going to be as good in this hoods position as opposed to being in the drops? I'd say potentially not but definitely very quick in terms of aerodynamics. He might be going, uh, moving from the, the hoods position down to the drops, back into the hoods, back and forth, depending on the technical sections of the course. Matt also going for the hoods position. Um, so similar thing, but then Brenton here, he's gone for the drops. So full straight line speed, Possibly not quite as aerodynamic, but I mentioned in the the other road bike time trial review video I did, I mentioned that I kind of some I, I can prefer a drops position for for road bike time trials because it takes the load and the strain off the triceps, and which can yeah you know, less energy cost for me I find um, when I'm running on that aero hoods position it takes a lot of energy to hold it maybe not quite as fast purely in straight line speed but you you could potentially make up for it in terms of speed, stability in terms of Potentially power output, I find being in the drops, I can hold, do a little bit more power than being in that super aero hoods position. And then obviously the cornering being in the drops for me is an advantage. Um, but I mean, Cam Scott's a Oz track team rider, he knows, he knows what he's doing, so this probably worked for him. Sort of personal preference. Matt Dinham here, so, so Matt finishing in the drops, so maybe he was switching up his position on the course. Um, you know, maybe decided along the way the drops were a bit better. And Brenton here finishing off super quick. Pretty big rider. Um, this is his ride here. Actually, it wasn't 460 watts, what I'm talking about. 485 watts for seven and a half minutes. 
And that's including all these, because it's very technical. You can see if you look up here, all these corners, and then he, he's having to freewheel through all these corners. So to, to average 485 watts for seven and a half minutes um, with all these freewheeling sections, insane. Normalized power here, which will kind of negate, take out some of these freewheeling sections. 497 normalized for seven and a half minutes. Um, no surprise he won one there. Super strong. Uh, I don't know many riders that are you know, doing that sort of power on the flat on a technical time trial. That's, that is incredible. Uh, punching out some of the corners. So starting off, peaking at sort of 950. Gain 916. So sort of 900s out of most of the corners. High 900s. Um, that last sprint he did at the end there, kicking up to, to 1,200. A couple of takeaways. First thing is his cadence. Is, it was actually very high. So average for the for the whole time trial was 97. But if we if you actually zoom into some of these sections, he's doing 107. Um, you know, for this 53 second section. Uh, other section over here, 108. So cadence quite high. Which you know, when you're doing 530 watts. Um, you know, if he's doing that down at 80, 90 RPM, it'd be very difficult. So cadence, you know, he would have to do some sort of training to be able to hold that cadence up there. But they, they did interview him at the end here. I was literally rubbing my hands together when I saw the first, uh, first recon lap and I would have loved it to have been one lap. I think that would have even suited me a bit more. I could have laid out more power and average, you know, six, 700 watts. But uh, I think the, the course was fantastic. I love the technicality of the course. I uh, really got to thank the organizers for using this space to put it on and I uh, loved it. So Brenton there, yeah, big anaerobic capacity. Um, he, he mentioned he probably wanted it to be to be one lap. I mean, if it was one lap, it would have been a three, you know, three minutes and 50 second effort. Brenton, if you're not sure of, you know, his history, he's, he's been a pro for a while. So he rode on the, the Drapak Pro Conti team, then rode for, for Delco for two years, been on Canyon DHB for two years. So very experienced rider. Good, like he's got some good results as well. Two stages at King High Lake, which is very high altitude, really tough to get results there. Three sprint stages at Tour of Korea, stage a Tour of Hainan, you know, stages Tour of Japan, Tour of Taiwan. Um, you know, very impressive sprinter. But obviously, he's not just that. Doesn't just have that sprint. He's obviously got the power output over a few minute effort. He also seems to upload a lot of his stuff to Strava. So if we go back and have a have a bit of a stalk, like what what sort of training is he doing to? To get that result, so assuming he's assuming everything, all the training he's doing is uploading, which he seems like pretty a down-to-earth guy. I don't know why he'd be hiding stuff. So if we take this um, at face value, seven rides per week, twelve and a half hours. You know, this is for the last four weeks. Seven rides per week, 385k, twelve and a half hours, which is you know not that much training to come out. And he actually won that race overall. So very high level of fitness for not much training. Um, so obviously definitely talent there, but also experience. Experience pays for, for a lot of things. Um, he knows what sort of training he will need to do to get in shape. Um, he's doing a bit of, looks like he's doing some coaching work. So Scotch cycling team. Scotch College is a private school uh, in Melbourne, Victoria. So I think he's doing some, you know, doing some, looks like he's doing some coaching work for there. So I've had a stalk. This is, <laughs> this is very scary. Shots fired to the to to the National Road Series for 2022. Brenton's been doing. Looks like he's been doing coaching work, couple of mountain bike sessions and a, <laughs> and a few sprints here and there. And he's whew, if he if he you know really dials things in for for 2022, uh, this is going to be very scary because uh, he's going to absolutely rip rip us a new one next year if he really um, ramps up his training so very impressive there definitely a rider to watch from inform next year see what he see what else he can do um yeah not much else to report from this just a little bit of a summary from this weekend of racing given there's no <laughs> no other commentary or anything about it thought i'd have a chat about it thanks for watching this video guys and i'll catch you in the next one